Hello again, everybody. This is Michael, KE4EST. Welcome back to the channel and Happy New Year. Hope everybody has a great 2019 coming up here. Uh, this here wasn't exactly planned as a video. I've got several things lined up I'm like, I want to do a video on for YouTube. But I was sitting here messing with this and working on it and thought everybody might like to see it. I got this, this is a BK Precision, 15 megahertz, one of these little mini oscilloscopes, it's a 1420 model, and I'm trying to be careful, I put my fingers, this is a battery operated model, and what I did here was, when I got it, it didn't work, I've been really looking for a small oscilloscope, what I'd really like to have is a little small uh, tube type oscilloscope, you know, just for the nostalgic reason of it. Something like uh, one of those RCAs or ICOs or something. It's got a little three inch screen in it, three inch CRT. But then I come across this and I seen this and I was like, what do you want for that? And you can see I've got a lot of it took apart here. It didn't come like this, it was all intact. It don't look like anybody had really been into it. Um, and what I did was, I took the battery out, so I ain't going to use the battery make it portable. I still got the wires here. I'll, I may leave those in case I ever change my mind, but I want to tape them off better. They got the little plastic around them here, but the ends of it still, you know, could short to something. So I'm going to tape that off probably and redo something in the back here. It had to... In the back, you can see it's got, and it's real simple, just a little oscilloscope. It's got an AC adapter input, and that's for charging the battery, you know. And then over here, it's got external power, but it was, I looked, I didn't have anything that's, it's on a little strange connector there. So instead of just sorting something in, I took one of these and took and tacked two wires onto the inside here and put that on it and that way i can come off my power supply and feed 13.8 volts right into it off my regular power supply uh, my big supply that runs all the time so i can uh, do that so i did that fired it up and nothing but i got to messing around with it and kind of noticed i heard you can hear that high-pitched you know why when the high voltage you know cranks off and um you know like the old crt monitors and you turn them on and you hear that high pitched whine and so i was like oh, that's strange so i looked around the front of it and a little red light came on and then i started getting a trace on the screen but the trace wasn't triggering properly at first i didn't see any trace they was just you could hear it you know and like, okay, something's happening here. And this, the light was on here. I had intensity all the way up, messing with the focus and everything else. And I'm messing with the butt. I got to notice when I changed it, one of the volts per division, or changed my time base, you'd see a flicker. And it was like way down here or something, I don't know. And now I could grab this position, move it a little bit. And change again and I see the line flickering up here and I messed around with trigger level and all that then also noticed it was way off over here the you know it's like a little piece of a line I can mess with the position control I brought that back I'm like, yeah, I got a position I got the trace in there positioned right and I had it positioned right on the crosshairs here the only one I turn this and like I said I wasn't really gonna do a video on this at first but I thought huh oh, you know Everybody might want to see what I'm doing. So I've been going through some troubleshooting. And it's not, you know, 1940s or 50s or anything like that. A lot of, like a lot of stuff I like to do. But I think after going through it some, it's it comes down to I've got uh, a couple of bad caps on the power supply. But there's a couple of things like I'm going to go through and change the capacitor, but we got a resistor down here. It's getting hot. Um, 
Let's see if we can see that. There, you can see it. See that one there it says R41. So that's getting a little warm. So I'm going to replace that and see what's going on. If it's just a poor design choice. Um, and that should have been a bigger resistor or the circuit could have been designed a little different. Um, or if something else is going out to cause that. But what I'm seeing in preliminary anyway, going through this, I think these boards here, the vertical and horizontal boards, are all they're fine. I can feed a signal into it and change things and everything does what it's supposed to, but it's kind of really hard to keep up with you know what's going on there, except for the trigger level. Um but it's also fed off a uh, voltage, one of the voltages off the power supply, so Power supply board's on the bottom here. Let's see, I've already got, I've got it pulled out. Now we had some wires loose and I hooked them back up. Some of them have to be unsoldered. And then some of them's got to be, uh, they got little plugs here. Let's see, I've got a, got a plug right here. And you see I've marked it, it takes the plugs loose. And, Checking voltages. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through. Like I said, even though it's not an ancient old thing from the 1950s, I'm still I'm just going to recap this board. And then I'm going to go in and investigate this where that resistor is, um, and see if I can find a schematic on it. I, I found part of a book on it, but I'm going to keep looking and see what else I can come up with. And then I'm going to go through and clean all these controls up really good and see if I can get this thing back working. Because if I do, I will make a, a curve tracer out of it, a signature tracer. And there's room back here where I took the battery out. That I could put some circuitry in here like this. But I've got it in another case over here. May just keep it external. But I don't really like this case. It ain't going to work like I want it to. So I'm going to put another case. Something that's close to the size of this. Match it. Maybe stack them. And then I can still, if I want to, use this as a regular oscilloscope for different things. Or I don't know. Um, but I think I'm leaning more toward going with an external unit and I can just feed into channels A and B here from that and then if I want to I can pull that and then make it regular scope I don't know but I think that's what I'm going to do I think I've decided I'm going to do that but anyway I'll start go over this and show you what's going on with it here I'm working on I'm going to uh, go through and replace all the capacitors and clean it up and see if we can get a nice steady trace on it and if I can get that going I'll bring it in another video and show you everything and show it working and then from there it may not be the third or fourth video down the line but at some point I'll show you a video where I've got this running as a curve tracer but anyway there's that and that's what I'm working on right now so if you like seeing stuff like this while I'm midstream stuff, let me know in the comments. If not, I mean, that's fine. I can just do the plan, but this one wasn't planned. No script, no nothing. I'm just rattling on here about it. But. Anyhow, so there it is. I'll keep working on it. And, but I'm getting ready to start and put new capacitors in. I got the board out and uh we're almost out got a little bit more just get that on now there and, and uh get those pastures changed out clean up all the controls and then fire it just like this here and see what's going to happen with it and if all goes good then we'll run it for a few days and see how it does if i'm doing something over the next few days after i get it going i'll leave it on the bench running and I'll use it where 
there's no need for you know something like that up there one of the faster more modern scopes or this one would be just fine i'll just set up and use it when i'm doing a slow checks or tests or whatever and let it run for a few days see how it does and if it seems like it's going to be all right then we'll uh, make a curb tracer out of it that'll be a real handy little curb tracer i'm still looking for the tube type oscilloscopes they just be just real neat to use reuse one of those you know it's good condition it works good and have one of those set up but i just don't really want one of the large ones you know and a lot of them are the five inches plenty of those but i can get, find me a three inch you know something small like this and with the crt on that you know how small that screen is um here we go let's take and show you here i mean across there that's over two inches diagonal or uh, not even three inches like two and a half inches diagonal so i mean that's a small screen there so that's perfect that's all you need you know most of the time for a curve tracer for a simple curve tracer you know so anyway until next time this is michael k4est 73 and happy new year